All right, guys, welcome back to another Evil GT video. Today is a good day because we are finally getting out in the porker. Now, I do have my resident mechanic with me. Well, I say resident. He's not really a resident mechanic. The grumpy mechanic who doesn't like being on camera, so I won't get Ash on camera. I do have a problem with this KN, and that is that it wears quite bad. There's a wheel bearing fault, 100%. I personally think it's the driver's side front, but I've got Ash in. Hopefully, you're going to tell me which side it is. Now, I was definitely wrong. It is definitely. Now I'm over on the near side, it sounds like it's from the near side, and Ash agrees, you think it's near side front as well. Would you usually recommend doing both at the same time, or just whatever one is making the noise and is broken? Because I'm doing it, just the broken one. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the funny thing with this is, I, I believe that this is a bit of a pig of a job. I asked the guys at Awesome about it ages ago, because I could hear the noise, and they were like, don't bring it here, we don't want to know. Now, I realise that you guys are here for the pause. But if you also like little Jap cars as well, make sure you check out Yaris Hilton 2.0. We're going to be turbo converting this. Well, currently, as you can hear, it's got no exhaust on it whatsoever because it was knackered. And I bet you've never heard a Yaris sound like that before. For those who may not have seen the first couple of videos on this car, we bought this car originally for £2,000, absolute bargain. It's done less than 90,000 miles. It looks like that. There's plenty of stuff that needs to be sorted out. You can see that the lens lenses are missing on that. There's a bit of a dodgy gap in there. That lens on the light has actually missed it up quite badly. That's, uh, that's a new one, I've not seen that before. The wheels need sorting. The tyres definitely need sorting. The bodywork actually here, as you can see, is pretty tatty. Apparently some sort of additive that you're supposed to put in the paint that makes it up, like flexible, almost like rubber, that obviously is supposed to go in bits like that where it moves with the body kit and stuff. I think what we're probably gonna end up having to do is taking this body kit off and then trying to sort this out uh, and then painting over it again, I don't know. I've even thought about wrapping it but I think with the wide arch kit, trying to wrap this and make it look neat is going to be difficult. So I think we'll probably stick with the paint and get it looking like a brand new condition. I do have a bit of an idea as to why I don't think this car looks like it's in brand new condition though. And I'm not talking about the paint on the wheel arches. I'm talking about the wooden blocks that are currently holding the front bumper up. And to confirm my theory, there's only one place to go that checks thousands of different databases all across the world. Obviously that's car vertical. It's not been recorded as stolen. I'm not surprised based on how it looks to be fair. There's no mileage discrepancies and there's no finance outstanding on it, which is fantastic. However, the damage. And delving deeper into that, my suspicions have been confirmed. The car is quite clearly a category N non-structural damage write-off. But then come on, it's a less than 90,000 mile four and a half litre V8 Porsche that we bought for £2,000. What were we expecting? Could have been much worse though, I suppose. It could have been this Cat S Porsche KN and looking at them pictures, that's really bad. So if you don't want to end up buying a lemon like us, then make sure you check out the link in the description below and use code EVILGT for your discount off your car vertical report. Let's just hope that based on this report, it's not worse than I think and it's not going to be a nightmare to fix now i feel like we could have fallen at the first hurdle here because that looks like it's got lockers on it and i've no idea where the key is now Ash just come up with a bit of an idea to get an 18 mil socket on look you can tell he's done this before no danger problem solved now unfortunately what i don't have is a stethoscope to try and listen right into the hub to see if we can hear the rumbling so we're trying to listen really carefully whilst spinning the wheel and this one particularly the mic definitely won't pick it up is a bit more sort of gritty than the others so i am pretty sure that we're going back to the driver's side i think it's this one oh! i've just realized that the pads are pretty low to be fair there's not a huge amount of meat left on them some of you guys will be like there's another hundred thousand miles in them but for us, we're gonna change them. They're not on the pad wear sensor yet, but they're very, very close. So while we're at this point, we may as well just change them. I've already spoken to Dean at Bagram Technic, and he's gonna get me a price, get back to me, and we'll get the fronts changed, no problem. Meanwhile, let's get this absolutely massive spacer off. It's 
So now because we're going to be replacing the pads on this, the easiest thing to do probably is to get these pads out first, then detach the actual caliper. I'm going to see if I can hang it up here somewhere. I don't really want to take it off completely because then I'm messing about with brake fluid and God knows what else. I've got to then get this off, spray these bolts and the bolts at the bottom at the track rod end, give this a good spray and a wire brush up to try and clean them up, get some lube on, and hopefully it's not going to be too easy then to get that hub, arm, whatever you call this. What's it called, Ash? You said it's not going to be too easy. Right, well, it's not going to be too... No, not going to be too hard, I meant. But I don't know what this is called. But whatever this is called, that's what I'm going to be taking off. Wow, I think I just outdid myself there with my perfectly scientific explanation of what's going on. But anyway, pin out, clip out, pads out. There we go, within a few minutes, not to blow my own trumpet, but I've done this a few times now. You can see how close it was to the pad wear sensor, it's almost flush that. So, we may as well just do this at this point, the wheel's off. New ones are on their way. They're going to be, I think Dean's just checking the price, but he's saying about £110 for um, pads for both sides. I'll take that, that's not bad. So we've run into a little bit of a problem, of course we have. I mean, it's not massive, but it's a little bit. Now, ideally, I didn't want to detach this from the brake line because I didn't really want to start messing about with brake fluid and bleeding brakes and God knows what. The problem I've got is to take this caliper off this disc, it's actually got a hard pipe just there. Now this hard pipe is attached to the flexi, but the flexi runs up the back of this arm and it's in like some sort of mad little clip and it runs up there. So I can't actually get this caliper off because it's gonna bend this pipe and obviously I don't wanna start replacing pipes as well. So I'm gonna have to undo it just here. Take the caliper off and hope that we don't lose too much fluid and start having to mess about with that as well. You old timers will know that what I'm about to say is absolute facts. Ooh. And he would just drop to the GoPro onto the Focus RS. That would have been a nightmare. This hard pipe, I was keeping my eye on it, knowing full well that they usually twist so the nut, which is just here, if it focuses, uh, usually seizes to the pipe. So when you're trying to undo it, it twists the hard pipe then. So I was keeping my eye on it, thinking, oh, we're all right here, we've cracked it, it's, it's moving fine. And then it literally just sheared. You can see the pipe's not even twisted or the end, anything, but it's just sheared and snapped clean off. So now I need a new hard pipe and we've got a now mess about. We're trying to attach it up the back of this arm in true Evil GT style. You lot know, every time. This is the great thing about having somebody in here who knows what they're doing, right? Because I literally have a go, cock it up, and then Ash sorts it out. It's class, this. So we've got the hard pipe off. Dean at Vagrem Technic is gonna make us a new braided lineup for that with the right fittings on the end. He has also sourced us out some pads. I think about 100 quid for the full front set of pads, which ain't bad for a car like this. You'd expect them to be five, 600 pound. The pads from Porsche, I found out, the exact same pads are 400 quid, I think. We managed to get them for about 100 quid. So if you're ever wondering where you could get cheaper brakes from, discs, pads, calipers, whatever, make sure you speak to the lads at Vagrem Technic because they'll sort you out. Noisy bastard. Just the disc and the backing plate to take off next and I couldn't even do that without his help. Now we're down to just the bare arm, as you can see. There is a bolt up there, which I've already doused with WD. The steering rack bolt and then there's another bolt just at the bottom here. So them three, I've all got to come out and also the big boy in the middle. This is where I cracked out my awkward bolt removal certificate, cleaned all the bolts up, give them a spray of WD-40, cracked them off and got them off with the impact gun. Easy peasy. Then it was the centre one. Ash had to help me with this. I couldn't get it out. The arm is out with the dodgy bearing just inside. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the machinery to be able to press this out or to press a new one in. So I'm going to go and see our friends at a head shop and see if they can help. And just like that, it's out. There's the old bearing. It's definitely knackered. You can see just inside the gap, there's bits flying about all over the place. That has seen better days. As quick as that, thanks very much to the head shop for taking out the old bearing and putting the new one in. We are all ready to go now to get the arm back on at the KM. Oh my God, what an absolute nightmare that was. So I managed to do this bolt up quite easy and that bolt up quite easy, but that one, because the actual thread itself spins as well, that was a nightmare. I cleaned everything up the thread the inside of the bolt the whole lot we had to apply pressure on this down to try and stop the thread from spinning while i was doing this up the buzz gun was literally just spinning the thread no matter how much i, I pulled down on that but we're done we're all tight we're all tight we're all tight and we're all tight so that now needs just building up with the brake on uh, disc caliper that kind of stuff and we're good to go and in true evil gt style we've run into another little problem and by little i mean this and for those who may not know what they're looking at here this is obviously the inside of the porsche cayenne caliper 
without any brake pads in. Now you'll see this is a six pot because there's six pistons and five of the six pistons went neatly back, no issue, moved nice and free, but this bottom one is completely seized. Now I've tried all the tricks I know, I've even asked Ash the mechanic if he knows of any sort of tricks as well, other than the wind back tool or even the pry bar, just to be ever so careful with it against the disc, but to see if we can push it back with the pry bar and leverage it off the disc, nothing, it is seized. So much so it was bending the pry bar, that's how much force I was putting into it. So that piston is seized out, I can't get the new pads in, so that means I need to refurbish these calipers. Well, I do say calipers, but then I don't have the pads out of this one yet and I've not tried to move the pistons back. So I'm gonna move on to this side, see how bad this one is. Hopefully it's okay. And we've only got the one to deal with to save us a bit of money. So it was off with the world's heaviest wheel, then time to disconnect the pad wear sensor. Once I got that off, I needed to knock the pin through, take the pad retaining clip out, remove the pads, and I checked the pistons, and thankfully, the near side front, which I was actually expecting to be worse, is better. Every single one of them six pistons moves nice and free, in and out, no issues. So that is great news. We've only got that one piston to try and sort out. Now let Ash know about this situation, and Ash, being the professional that he is, although he's not a mechanic anymore, amazingly, did say that there's a company called Big Red with two Gs. They supply the piston kits on their own. So he said, why don't we have a go at trying to fix this ourselves? Now usually, I would take this off and send it straight to VBT but I am trying to keep this as cheap as possible because the car was seriously cheap anyway so I'm gonna have a look to see how much your kit is and see if they maybe just do singular pistons which you guys might be like well that's a stupid idea you may as well just fix them all while you've got the caliper apart but if I can get a singular piston cheaper then why not now I couldn't find the kit on their website it's only showing me rear kits not front brake kits and this one Ash has just sent to me here on eBay is the whole kit for the front caliper it is 140 46 pound best of but I actually only need one of these bigger pistons and the seals and things so I'm going to give him a quick call now I'm going to see if I can get just one of these pistons much cheaper I just had a conversation with one of the nicest people ever the chap at Big Red 2G's I just spoken to him and said listen I've seen these kits that you do for the brakes on this car and it seems to just be the whole thing is there any chance you can sell the bits to me separately? Of course we can, mate, no problem. 13 pounds delivered later, I've got a piston, the inner hydraulic seal, and the outer dust cover arriving, well, 12 pound 80 to be precise, and it should be in the next couple of days. That's gonna save us a fortune, and we can get this caliper working perfect. So work has stopped on the driver's side now because I need to wait for my new piston to come. So if we go back round to the near side, I'm going to get this hardline pipe off, replace this for a braided hose and get the new pads in because the pistons on this side are absolutely perfect. I started by removing the old hardline pipe and replaced that with the brand new Hell Performance braided hose from the guys at VBT. I then fitted the new brake pads that they'd also supplied, luckily this was miles easier than the other side, I reused the pad wear sensor and we were all good. Now literally just to wait for the new piston kit to come for the driver's side and just like magic our order from Big Red has arrived, thank you very much to the guys there, they've really sorted us out, I have managed to get ourselves a whole new piston, a seal and the dust cover, the boot for the piston as well and for those who are wondering what that looks like exactly, piston in a hydraulic seal, I think, and that is the dust cover that goes over that to stop them, supposedly, from seizing. Now, I know what you're wondering. You definitely don't know how to do this, and you're absolutely right. This was Ash's idea. I'm gonna be taking his guidance and hopefully learning, so next time I can do it myself. Now, this is definitely something that I can't pass off as my own idea because, well, it was this is way too clever for something that I would think of. But actually, what we're gonna do is, we are going to, this is Ash's idea, by the way. I won't steal your thunder, Ash. Don't worry about it, mate. He's, got, he's put this new pad in to stop the pistons from coming out this side but then this side we're going to use the old pad and chop the bottom of it off so that the piston doesn't touch the back of the pad at all what that then will do is stop any of the pistons that we want to keep in the caliper from popping out but hopefully then once we pump the pedal that's going to push out the piston that we want to come out my only worry is that piston is seized it won't go back in so what means it's going to come back out ash So there we have it, here is Ash's idea sort of visually now looking, so the pad at the bottom has been chopped off, hopefully once we start pumping the pedal this will push out. My only next concern is that the disc is going to be in the way, then what? First job is getting the reservoir filled up with the brake fluid so we can then get these brakes bled up. Whoa. 
getting shouted at here. You don't see this on camera because he doesn't say anything, but he literally just shouts at me. So what he's basically saying is, I didn't have to bleed the brakes because there was air in there which obviously compresses. So I've been able to push the piston out at least. It's come out because I'm pumping on the brake here and he's then just been able to pop the seized piston back in, no problem. Which makes no sense because I literally had a pry bar on it that was bending, I've got that much force on it. Ash is now saying, I told you to fucking do that. Why, why are you pissing about? Sit rep, it does need to be changed. It keeps seizing back up again. So as you can see, the seized up piston has just popped out there. We got it out in the end. When you were pushing it back in and then I was pumping it back out, was it seizing back up again, Ash? You needed to do it anyway, didn't it? All right, that's enough. I don't want your whole life story. So this is like the dust boot cover thing that goes over the piston and obviously goes over the hole for the piston. We have a new one just there. So I'll put that in the bin. This inner seal just here, this is the hydraulic seal, right? This is the one that we're going to be replacing, which we think was the reason why it was seizing up, maybe. It was part of the reason anyway, it was contributing. So again, we have another one of those, which is just here. The new hydraulic seal is in position. Next up is to put the piston in. And then last but not least is the dust cover. And do you know what? Now I've seen that done. That wasn't as daunting as I actually expected. I was like, stripping a brake caliper down must be a pretty big job. But that wasn't that bad. And there we have it. The car is, well, it's definitely not finished because we've got loads of bodywork stuff to do. <laughs> I'm just hoping that the whirring noise that is definitely the, one of the wheel bearings is the wheel bearing that we have actually changed. It's time for a bit of a joyride to see if we've managed to fix our problem. Now I think you're gonna to have to take our word for this because I'm pretty sure the microphone wasn't picking the whirring up to begin with and it definitely wouldn't be picking it up now even if it was still there. So I can categorically tell you we have fixed the issue. Do you know what, that car sounds so good, but my God, it's slow. It's like, you remember years ago, maybe even still today, you had kids on 50cc little go-peds, and they come past you like, past you, but they were literally crawling past you dead slow. That reminds me of that, just with a massive V8 engine, it's exactly the same. That sounds like it's going dead fast. It's not. <laughs> So now the brakes are sorted at least, that wheel bearing's definitely sorted. The car's still looking sorry for itself, there's cracks all over the bodywork and things like that that we do need to sort out. Big job for me, I wouldn't have had a clue where to start with that, so thank you very much to Ash for that. New bearings in, hubs back on with the arms and all that kind of stuff, sorted. No warning lights, the brakes feel amazing. If you've enjoyed today's video, thank you very much for watching. Please do consider subscribing if you haven't already, that would be amazing. Next up we have bodywork, wheels and tyres and all kinds of other bits and bobs for that KN. So, uh, uh, yeah, make sure you check out the other videos.